quantification, right? We can talk about quantifiers. Um, what I want to do with the discussion of quantifiers, and I, again, I'm going to try not to sort of be redundant and put out information that was already there. I just want to clarify some things because um, there's variations philosophers symbolize and, and traditionally use symbols that, that uh, computer scientists don't use and vice versa, right? We all mean the same thing, but there can be some confusion in, in the symbolization. Quick example, um, this doesn't have to do with quantifiers yet. I sort of just came to my mind. You might see this, someone might use three bars. Three bars is synonymous with the biconditional, right? Um, philosophers typically use biconditionals for the most part, and some, some philosophers use biconditionals. Computer scientists almost exclusively use three bars. Um, the, the U is the same as the conditional. Um, this this uh, sort of, I don't know what that would be classified as a TP or I don't know what that is. is this, I, I don't use this. It's the same as the conjunction. It's the same as the ampersand, which I can't draw, and so on, right? So it's, you know, the longer, you, the more you practice this, you sort of, I, I, I don't know why it hasn't been standardized. All of us should be using the same symbols. Um, but we're not, right? It, they all mean the same thing, but the symbolization is different. This is where a lot of confusion comes into play because if you're trying to understand um, uh, quantification theory, um, you know, predicate logic, you know, predicate calculus, symbolic logic, modal logic, depending on who's teaching, um, you know, the variables could be any number of variables, and there's a lot of confusion that can come about. And maybe in one video, I'll just like do a list of all the different ways that, you know, various concepts are symbolized um, and you can use that as sort of a road map to make sense of what it is that you're looking at. Uh, so that's that's just an aside. Um, so quantifiers. Um, we have at this level two quantifiers, right? The first quantifier that we have is what's known as a universal we have a universal quantifier, right? And um, the universal quantifier is simply symbolized as sort of this upside down A, right? The universal quantifier is symbolized by the upside down A. That's, that's what it is. And I'll tell you how to read it and what it means in, in a second. The, the next quantifier that we have is what's known as a is what's known as an existential quantifier, and it's symbolized by uh, a backwards E, right? So universal quantifier, existential uh, quantifier. Another important point, and as I was going through this, I noticed that there were variations in, in, in um, symbolization. It can be confusing because not everyone uses, and I don't want to jump the gun, um, not everybody uses this symbol for the universal quantifier. Sometimes people use, and I, I think as is more practice, um, people just use this as their universal quantifier. Um, this, this claim, and this claim are interchangeable, right? That looks intimidating, but it's not really saying anything. It's just saying um, this claim, and I'm going to tell you what this means, is exactly the same as the biconditional. It's exactly the same as this claim. And I'll tell you what these claims mean in uh, just a few sections. Actually, I'm going to tell you right now. All right, so um, imagine that we have this, right? Imagine, and we do. The question is, well, what does that mean, right? I see this symbol. What does the symbol mean? It basically means for all x, right? This, you translate this as for all x. Right? This also, this is also translated as for all x. So that it's exactly the same, right? For all x, for all x is exactly the same. You're saying exactly the same thing. Some people use this, some people use that, some people use them interchangeably. It can get very confusing, but it's really not difficult to understand. Again, I'm not going to go into sort of the application of this just yet. I just want to clarify some of the confusion that might arise in watching different videos. You know, um, not everybody uses the same symbolization, but they mean exactly the same thing. It's a matter of preference, I guess. Um, the next, then, is the, uh, the existential, right? So the existential, how would this be read? There's a number of ways that you can read, read this. Um, the first way is for some x, 
and that's how I typically read it. Um, but you can also read this as there, which is a little bit more complicated, there exists at least, oh, yeah, yeah, exists at least uh, one x, right? You can read this as for some x, or there exists at least one x, right? So my existential claim and my universal claim. My existential claim and my universal claim. And this is for all x. Okay. So for all and for some. Uh, so that's that. N nothing too uh, complicated. Next thing that I want to do is I want to, again, this is just so that you have, this is like more of a reference video, right? This isn't, I'm not really going to get into anything deep. I just want to hopefully clarify all the confusion that can pop up from watching multiple videos. Um, next thing that I want to do is clarify a point or two. Um, this, if you see this uh, in the example where we said k is a property, right, and it's it's um, our predicate term, and the property is having knowledge, then this would be read. This statement would be read for we know that this is for all, right? For all x, remember, for all x, the universal claim, for all x, and that's symbolized by the first part, right? That's symbolized by this, right? So for all x, then you say x has knowledge, right? For all x, for all x, x is said to have knowledge, right? X has, which is symbolized by, so this is read for all x, which is that symbol, x has knowledge. x, the subject, has the property of being knowledgeable, okay? So for all x, x has knowledge. That's how um, that is read. The next thing that I want to show is uh, this. Um, how is this read? Well, you know, take a, take a shot at what you think, how do you think that would be read? We see that this part's the same, so it should be the same. It's just different, right? This would be uh, for some x, which is represented by this, right? For some x, which is represented by this, x has knowledge. Represented by, right? So, for this is uh, this symbol, this uh, structure means for all x, x has knowledge. This means for some x, right? Which is that x has knowledge. Pretty simple. 